I saw that sister on the Breakfast Club this morning. What's her name? Erica K. Williams. What, what's the sister who was on there with Charlemagne and Envy today? Here we back now. Dr. Umar Johnson has weighed in on the entire Ebony K. Williams situation. And we're going to see if he keeps that same energy. Because as you know, Dr. Umar Johnson, he's known to lay the hammer down when it comes to black men like most people usually do. But when it comes to the other side, you know, everyone just, you know, they put the kid gloves on. So let's see if Dr. Umar Johnson keeps the same energy. Let's get into it. You was on some talented 10th bullshit and you tried to take it back to the community this morning, sister. See, we can't talk out both sides of our mouth. We can't talk out both sides of our mouth, sister. We can't talk out both sides of our mouth. I didn't disagree with much of what you said today, but that's not what you said the other day, sister. You was talking down to working class blacks. You are a bourgeoisie. You are a bourgeoisie feminist. And I hope to God you wasn't engaged in a white man because I thought somebody said you was engaged to a white man. Eric Ebony, I better not find out your ass was swimming in the milk. If I find out your ass was swimming in the milk, I'm going to lose a lot of respect for you, sister. Hmm. Okay. 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 All right, Dr. Umar Johnson. Okay. All right. Now, you know, on my channel, a frequent topic of discussion is these fake fraudulent pro-black women. They talk all this pro-black shit. They talk all that pro-black, pro-black, but their actions never match their words. And in my opinion, it's an epidemic of these women walking around, bro. These women walking around talking like Coretta Scott King, but their actions and their mindset, it doesn't match the rhetoric. And it's gotten so bad that now you got people like DJ Envy and Dr. Umar Johnson talking about it. People who I, I've never heard them bring that up before. DJ Envy has never, ever, ever in the decades he's been on radio ever talk about the epidemic of women who talk that pro-black nonsense, but their actions are completely contradictory. And Dr. Umar Johnson, from what I've seen, he usually aims his target at black men. But you know, you know the epidemic of fake pro-black women is so bad. Now Dr. Umar Johnson got to address it. Jesus Christ. Let's get back into it. Because what that tells me, if you were with a damn Neanderthal snow puppy, then you're telling me at the end of the day, you are trying to condemn black men to justify dating white. If you are an interracial dater, if you are a bunny hopper, then what you are telling me is your whole diatribe, your whole rant against black men driving the bus was a justification so you can date a white man. I hope that ain't the case. Damn, that's so crazy. The women have been going so hard with the fraudulence. They've been out here so hard with the fraudulence that now Dr. Umar Johnson can see the hypocrisy in broad daylight. And I mentioned it, I believe, in the video I dropped yesterday. Everything they talk about, all that fake pro-black nonsense they talk about when they try to put black men's feet to the fire, everything they say is to justify their own desire to do what they accuse black men of doing. When they accuse black men of running off with the white women, they only say that so they can justify in their minds their future actions when they run off with a white man. When they say all the elite black men are running off with all the white women, they only say that to justify their own desire to run off with a white man they goddamn self. The majority of women talking that pro-black nonsense, they're only saying that to manipulate black men. Either to manipulate black men or to seduce black men. Because they know. Matter of fact, hold up. Let me put a comment on the screen that I got on my video the other day about Ebony K. Williams. This brother came into my comment section and he hit the nail directly on the head. This brother came into my comment section and he said this. Ebony K. Williams is a materialistic woman who parades herself for the highest bidder. The reason why she says all that black stuff is because she knows much of what she says will resonate with the most responsible black men, many of which are rich and successful. Ultimately, all she needs is one to ignore his better judgment and take a chance with her. That aside, I seriously doubt she believes anything she says. If she's pro anything, it's pro best interest. Whatever she has to do to obtain the things in life she feels she's deserving of, she'll do it. And I said this excellent comment, especially the part about all she needs is one black man to ignore his better judgment and take a chance with her. Excellent analysis. And that's a fact. When a woman comes around talking all that black community, my, my black family, chattel slavery, our ancestors, we came from the cotton fields, the sugar plantations, the slave boats, white supremacy. Women like Ebony K. Williams understands that type of rhetoric is going to pull on the heartstrings of black men who, like the brother said, are rich, successful, love their people, love their community. She knows that rhetoric, that is the art of seduction. You see, in my younger days, before I realized the majority of these pro-black women are a bunch of frauds, phonies, and counterfeit fakes, I would have been seduced by that. I would have been like, man, she's a real one. Oh, man. She, oh, man, that's, that's wifey right there. Oh, yeah. But as you become more knowledgeable 
and you notice certain patterns, you realize, oh man, they're trying to run game, bro. They're trying to run game, bro. All of that is game. Like, you know, when you try to seduce a woman, oh, baby, you so beautiful. Oh, man. It's the same thing in reverse. She's trying to seduce you. Oh, man, I love my people. So, oh, yeah, my brother. Oh, yeah, my brother. Oh, I love you, my brother. Black power. Yeah. Black, black, black community. Black wealth. Black family. My brother. I want to uplift the black man and see the black community win and thrive and prosper. Yes, indeed. You see, a black man who is, like, like the brother said, successful, responsible, loves his people, you're going to get seduced by that rhetoric if you don't know any better. That's why I tell y'all boys, don't, hey, I told y'all boys in the last video, only a weak man will get seduced by a bunch of sweet words. But the only reason she's talking like that right now is because the white man didn't work. She had a white fiance. It didn't work out. Now she's back around. And, I, yo, I've done videos on this, bro. These women... They go off, they deal with Christopher Columbus and George Washington, it doesn't work out, then they want to come back around to the black man. My brother, I want to deal with a black man, a successful black man who loves his people, an intelligent black man, so I can have a black family. But guarantee, if they had the opportunity to run off with the European, they would have been on the first train smoking. They would have been on the first thing smoking, up in the kitchen, barefoot and pregnant with a bunch of mulatto kids. I guarantee you that. I guarantee. And let me tell the lady something right now, in case you didn't know. When you run off and you go deal with a white man, you better pray to God it works out. You better pray to every ancestor you got that it works out. Because trying to come back around to a black man, it's going to be a very small pool of black men that's going to accept you. Those black men who are intelligent, conscious, love their people, love their community. Once you run off with the European, just know you, are, you will no longer have access to those men. And there have been multiple women in the past that I've dealt with. You meet them, they're beautiful. You get to know them a little bit. You get to know their past. You realize, oh man, what? You was dealing with a white man? What? And you talking about this pro-black? What? What? There have been multiple women that I've ghosted without a single explanation. I didn't give them any reason why. I just blocked their number, deleted their number. They tried to reach out to me. They never could reach me ever again. And I don't think I'm wrong for that. We all got our standards. Like I said, Ebony K. Williams said she don't want to deal with a bus driver. I don't want to deal with no fake pro-black, counterfeit, fraudulent type of chick. It is what it is. Once you show me that you want that type of time, which the majority of y'all are on that type of time, you're talking this pro-black, black power, black fist up in the air, but your mindset and your actions stand in direct contradiction to everything you're talking about. Now, in the modern day, Ebony K. Williams, she's talking about all this black power, black power. But during the goddamn pandemic, during the entire George Floyd fiasco, she was laying up in bed having intimate relations with a European. So stop talking to me about this black power, black society, black community, the, the chattel slavery. I'm not trying to hear none of that. And unfortunately, so many women have this mindset where they truly believe that you can be pro-black and lay up in bed with white men. And in fact, I had women come into my comment section and try to defend that. I had to block y'all. I had to block y'all. I'm telling you right now. Come into my comment section. Try to defend that. You're getting blocked. I'm not arguing. I'm not debating. You come into my comment section. You try to justify talking pro-black, but being pro-white, I'm not. No, I'm, I'm cool, man. I'm, I'm cool. I'm blocking you and I'm banning you off the channel. Let's get back into it. And I don't know where you've been getting your reports from, sweetheart, but we got two million Africans with college degrees unemployed. We got 2 million Africans with college degrees unemployed because you was doing a whole lot of pushing college. You was doing a whole lot of pushing college today like it's some form of upward mobility. I'm sorry, Sister Ebony K. Williams. College is not an opportunity for 21st century Africans. College is not an opportunity for 21st century Africans. It's putting us into debt to the banks, my sister Ebony K. Williams. So where is your solution for collective group economics? I didn't hear none of that. Now, when it comes to the topic of college, I'll cut Ebony K. Williams some slack because she grew up in a different time. She's from that generation. I believe she was born in uh, the early 80s, late 70s or something like that. Back then, college was the wave. Everybody was promoting college as a way for upward mobility. So she's from a different time, a different generation. So I'll cut her some slack when it comes to that. It wasn't until recently in the past decade or so, the conversation has kind of changed. People are more focused on entrepreneurship, business creation, things like that. Because now that we got the data and the information that shows that college isn't really, you know, the guaranteed vehicle of success that it was promoted to be decades ago. She's from a different time, a different generation. So I'll cut her some slack when it comes to that, because my parents were the same way. My parents, it was like, yo, college or nothing. But my parents pushed, you had, you had to go to college for a certain degree, like a degree that actually mattered in society, a degree that really could contribute to society, not a useless degree. The mistake a lot of people make is they just think going to college just to go to college, even if your degree has no value. Now that I don't agree with. So yeah, but like I said, she's from a different time and I can cut her some slack in that area, right? Now let's get back into it. Ebony K. Williams, do you know that you got plumbers who make more money than doctors? 
Ebony K. Williams, do you know you got carpenters who make more money than surgeons? Ebony K. Williams, do you know you got chefs who make more money than engineers? You got plumbers who make more money than architects. I think you got to go look at your, uh, your uh, census data, my sister. Now going back to what I said, like I said, Ebony K. Williams is from a certain generation where they put the fancy titles over everything. That generation where if you're not wearing the fancy European suit, then it doesn't matter how much money you make or what you do. You got to have the fancy European suit working at the corporate office. That's the only thing that has value in the eyes of that generation. Let's get back into it. Very articulate, well-spoken, but I don't hear a lot of conscious energy coming from her. A lot of my middle-class bougie black sisters, they on that individualism Europeanism. Oh man, now I want to make a correction to Dr. Umar Johnson. You know, when she when he says the middle class bougie blacks, you got to understand a lot of these, you know, so-called bougie black corporate chicks he's talking about, a lot of these women are brand new money. They are just coming into money now, right? Usually they're the first person in their in their family to go to college. Like I said, look at Ebony K Williams, her family. She admitted herself she comes from a poor family. Her mom was a bus driver. Her grandma and grandpa was like some sharecroppers. She doesn't come from wealth, power, and prestige. And that's why she's so infatuated with the finer things in life. Because when people come from, you know, these humble backgrounds and they finally get some money, oh man, bro, I'm telling you, they lose their mind. They lose their mind. You know what I mean? They lose their mind. They get a little bit of money and they can't eat peanut butter and jelly sandwiches no more. They got to have steak for breakfast. They need the Louis Vuitton, the Christian Louboutin. They need the S-Class Benz, the BMW 750. It's like that joke on social media where they put Bill Gates next to the rapper and Bill Gates has a regular t-shirt, some slacks and some shoes and the rapper got a $50,000 watch, $100,000 chain, Gucci belt, $2,000 sneakers. It's the same thing. It's the same thing with these women too. They finally get some money after being broke their whole goddamn life and they got to flex, they got to flash and anything below lavish luxury is not good enough for them. They're obsessed with their life resembling the top 1% because they've been broke their whole life. And in my experience, People who actually come from money are actually way more humble and way more down to earth than these people who finally come into money later in life after they get into their career. Those people are, listen, their heads get as big as the goddamn solar system. Whereas in my experience, people who actually grew up having nice things, they're actually way more down to earth. They're not too good for a goddamn peanut butter and jelly sandwich. They're not too good where they're looking down on the bus driver and the plumber. You know what I mean? Like in my experience, my anecdotal experience, you know, you might say something different, but that's just what I observed in my travels now at the same time ebony k williams is entitled to her preferences and her standards because i got my own preferences and my own standards but in my opinion i think people are coming down on her for two reasons number one like i said your own mama was a bus driver your grandparents were some damn sharecroppers and now you're talking about my man gotta own the bus company he gotta own mca like what shut your dumb ass up man and that's what i'm saying someone who actually comes from money who actually grew up having money they would never say some nonsense like that, bro. They would never say, my man got to own the bus company. That right there is a woman that grew up eating cereal with water. You know what I'm saying? That's a woman who came from the struggle. All that shit, that, that's the struggle talking. My man got to own the whole bus company. <laughs> man, be quiet, man. Be quiet. You grew up eating leftovers for lunch. And I also think the other reason why people are coming down on her, people like myself, is we don't appreciate the double talking, schizophrenic, fake pro-black, Black liberation, black struggle, chattel slavery, white supremacy. Meanwhile, your ex-fiance was a damn white man. And when everybody was out protesting for George Floyd, tearing up the community, you was laying up in the apartment, sucking a white man dick. So at the end of the day, please stop talking this pro-black nonsense. Please be quiet. You come from the struggle. You come from humble backgrounds, humble beginnings. There's nothing wrong with your preferences and your standards. But just understand, once you put these things out into the atmosphere, people are going to react how they react. And it is what it is. Like I said, there's a reason why you're still on the hunt at 40 years old and you can't even keep no man, whether he's black, white, Jewish, Arab, Muslim, Christian, voodoo, it don't even matter. You can't keep not a single man. All right. After four decades walking around the earth's surface, you still can't find not a single man. So it's obviously not a black man problem. It's obviously not a white man problem. It's obviously not a, a poverty problem. It's obviously not an income problem. Look in the mirror, baby girl. Look in the mirror. Anyways, it's your boy Nefakari Desaline back in the building. Yes, indeed. Like, share, subscribe, cash app in the description. And I'm gone. Peace. Reincarnated, I'm back in original fashion. I left on a horse and came back in that ass. And I left with abundance and came back to famine. We used to be pyramids, now we be rapping. Look how the mighty have fallen. Used to be running, now we be walking. When you be cooning, that's when they applauded. Selling your soul, your sons and your daughter. Got a couple.
come up in this shit, they stuck in the mix. Really, my heart would be breaking. That's why I'm stacking that paper and handle my business. Pass it down in generation. Talking about money and power and building a nation. That's a deadly combination. Never be watching the TV, they pushing the genus. Falsifying information. Know they got malice intentions. Step in the room and I'm feeling the tension. Enemy watching me blocking my vision. Get for the check, cause I need my redemption. Building my kingdom, I need to protect it. Ready for war like a young money Congo. Never decided the team is the model. Up in the crib and I'm whipping up waffles. Up in the crib and I'm smoking gelato. I'm chilling, I'm taking my pain and making ambition. I'm blessed by the guys, but I ain't religious. I can't for the power, they can't for the bitch. They make a no hour with it. Wedge, I got business. This shit is an art and they can never be taught. Selling my soul, I can never be bought. Play with my money, I see you in court. Run to the check and I do it for sport. Babylon falling, I go to the source. Packing my luggage and go overseas. Shorty be with me and she so at least. Shorty be charged that I'm calling her Hershey. Secret intelligence probably gonna murder me. Don't fuck with brands, cause nigga, I'm Haitian. Say the wrong shit and you're smacking their faces.